This is Burl Schwartz, and I am going to uh, welcome for a Zoom interview State Senator Curtis Hurtel, a Democrat from East Lansing. Uh, Senator, it's good to see you. Always good to see, good to see you too, uh, Burl. I hope you're uh, doing well. I am, and uh, I hope the same for you. Absolutely. The family's doing well. Um, obviously, uh, my wife and I are trying to both work in this house with four kids at the same time. So <laughs> it, that's, that can be interesting, but, uh, uh, but we're certainly um, uh, all doing well health-wise. That's good. I'm very happy to hear that. We just heard Governor Whitmer extend the stay-at-home order uh, till uh, through April 30th. Uh, I think we were expecting it was going to be longer. Uh, is that a good sign? Uh, to be honest, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure she could go longer uh, because of the length of time the legislature extended the state of emergency. Maybe there was some way that I'm not aware of, but I, if I, my bet yesterday, if I was a betting person, uh, was April 30th. Uh, your dealing with the legislature was back this week. Uh, uh, what was your, th how did you feel about having to go back into the Capitol? Well, first of all, I, I never complain about being asked to do our job. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, um, there are people risking their lives uh, throughout this. Um, healthcare workers, uh, people that work at grocery stores, first responders are all all risking their lives. Um, so I'm not going to complain about being asked to come in. That being said, um, I do think that if we're coming into session, uh, we should have done the logical thing, which is extend the order for the full 70 days. Uh, that would not be the stay-at-home order. That would have been the emergency order. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, um, when we can reopen, how we reopen, is a decision that should be made with doctors and scientists, not politicians. Um, uh, you know, this is a this is a, a global pandemic. Michigan um, has been hit very hard, um, and you know, even legislators saw a member of our own family uh, die. Um, so, uh, at some point. Uh, you know, you would hope the legislature uh, would do the right thing. And I'm very concerned that in three weeks that it might be hard to get a quorum to try to extend these orders again, because quite frankly, um, there, there will be legislators that get sick. Um, so, uh, you know, I wish we had uh, done the right thing. Uh, still at the same time, I had never a problem going into the legislature. Uh, we're seeing, uh uh, problems, uh, understandably, with uh, people trying to file for unemployment. The system is uh, ob obviously overwhelmed. Uh, yes. This uh, governor's taken some steps. Uh, do you feel that everything is being done that can be done? Uh, so I, I talk to the unemployment agency every single day, and I know that they are uh, I know the steps that they're taking in order to make uh, it better. Um, I, I think when you asked uh, everything that could be done, should be done, I think that, that I would say that the answer is they're doing everything they can, but that probably isn't very helpful to people that are still waiting. Um, so uh, what I can tell you what they have done is they've hi went, uh, hired uh, 200 uh, additional em uh, employees. Um, they uh, have people working. Um, 12 hour days, six days a week, all over time, all the time. Uh, that, that, that are the normal employee there. Um, they've increased bandwidth into the system. They've expanded the hours for the calls. DTMB has added uh, a, another group of people to help with some of the online questions so that they can be helpful. Um, and I think the big frustration is the weight. The weight's one big part. And the other one is the uh, the, the 1099 employees and um, the uh, the extra $600 that we're supposed to, supposed to be in. Uh, for those two things, what we've been waiting for is the Federal Department of Labor to give us guidance because, and that's what every state's waiting for. No state has actually gotten to that point. 
Um, so I understand some people's concerns there, but that's what's been waited for. My understanding is that in the last 24 hours, uh, we've gotten most of that guidance. And I think you'll be hearing uh, sometime in the next 24 hours, a very good news from the department uh, for those that were applied that, that deny that were denied uh, that were 1099 employees. So I, I think there will be um, a lot of good news happening there. Uh, but I get people's frustration. I can tell you this though: um, these last three weeks have been have each been record-setting weeks in terms of people pl applying for unemployment in Michigan. Uh, no time have we ever experienced anything like this. And so, um, no, the system was not built for that. When people are calling and getting a busy signal, that means there's a thousand people waiting in line to talk to somebody. I mean, just to tell you, you know, how many slots there are in that queue. Um, so uh, it's unprecedented. And so, uh, I, but, but again, none of that is an excuse because uh, people want government to work for them. They're in pain, they're hurting, and we should be doing everything we can to fix it. And uh, I would encourage people out there who are still having problems and they can't work around to, to call my office because uh, we have uh, staff that has a direct tie into the agency and um, we shouldn't be your first call uh, because they should be your first call. But if you can't get it solved, we, we certainly want to help. Uh, Senator, the uh, governor spoke today uh, about the importance of uh, not uh, allowing non-essential places uh, such as golf courses or businesses such as uh, lawn maintenance uh, to operate uh, at this time. Uh, there seem to be a lot of uh, places though that you could argue really aren't essential. Do we need pizza uh, <laughs> so many places, etc. And, and a broader concern is the people working in these uh, places. Sure. I can't tell you uh, uh, how many places I've been where, uh, whether it's a coffee carryout where three or four young people are elbow to elbow at the drive through window. I picked up a pizza somewhere last night where uh, three people were within feet of each other at the register, none of them wearing masks or gloves. Sure. Uh, I'm concerned about the workers and whether uh, we're doing enough, we're policing enough, but we're not requiring them to wear masks. Uh, should we be uh, tougher on the so-called essential businesses that are staying open. You know, it's interesting. It's, a de it's an interesting debate that I've heard a lot uh, on both sides of, of it. Um, you know, I think that there are other arguments on the other side, like, for example, people that work in landscaping, uh, where they're working on one-man crews that they're not going to come in contact with anybody, and that uh, uh, might make sense. Um, I think it's hard to keep drawing and drawing lines. That's a difficult part of all this process, and that's why every time there's an order, I say, wait a minute, look at the frequently, frequently asked questions. Uh, you know, I think that the governor, for example, on big box stores said this time that you can go to the grocery store, but that doesn't mean you can go throughout and shopping for all those other things that are there. Uh, I don't know if pizza's essential or not, Burl. I mean, <laughs> you ordered pizza last week, I'm ordering pizza tonight for my kids. Uh, in the night, end of the day, um, I got four kids and, uh, you know, I, I, I do all the grocery shopping and I do all the cooking in my house and there are nights that, uh, I would like a night off and I'm assuming you did the same thing. And some people just can't cook and some people aren't, some people aren't very good cooks. Uh, so, I, um, you know, I, that's the problem is where do you, is the pizza essential? Is the McDonald's essential? Is... You know, I mean, I think people are always going to have those questions. Uh, I think that the governor's drawn mostly reasonable lines. I think that certainly we should be expecting people to be wearing gloves and wearing masks. So that, that's not good. And uh, um, I think that that could be something we could certainly require. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think at some point um, you could draw so many lines that you could never figure it out. So I think you have to be somewhat careful there, too. Uh, Senator, we're uh, due to have uh, an election in May. Uh, yes. Should we uh, say 
you have to do it by mail. So this is, that, that's a good question. Um, uh, I think the compromise that has been developed is that uh, for most people, they'll take the, the, the mail option. There'll be one polling precinct open um, at each of these locations. Um, I will say... Uh, one polling precinct, for example, in the city of Lansing. Exactly, yeah, on a May election. So um, this is what I would say. Uh, there are some people who don't have a fixed address or have moved in the middle of the election process where it's if, if you said they could not go any place to vote, that they could be dis disenfranchised. You have blind individuals, and this is something I'm working on actually in my office, uh, you have blind individuals who there is no braille ballot in Michigan. So uh, when they come in, go into the polls, um, there's a machine that helps them vote. Um, and it, normally you'd say, well, you could get help from somebody else. That, because of social distancing, somebody else shouldn't be going to your house either. So, so um, I think democracy is really important. And uh, at the right to vote is probably the most important sacrosanct right that we have so I, I don't i would feel very uncomfortable developing a system that disenfranchises people um i think that the compromise that's been established encourages people most people i think will vote by mail those that really have to vote in person should still have that opportunity very good uh i, I can't uh, avoid having uh, discussing politics with you because i always love oh, go ahead, yeah. politics with you so now, uh, S Senator Sanders has done a bit of a strange thing. Uh, he has suspended his campaign, but uh, he hasn't really dropped out because he even mentioned that, uh, you know, there are still delegates at stake and he's not going to take his name off the ballot. Uh, where do you stand, first of all, do you think? I mean, obviously Joe Biden's going to win this thing, but- uh, Sure. It, 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 is there really, isn't there a better path forward if Sanders got out of this thing altogether? What do you think? Well, I, first of all, you know, I think Senator Sanders has brought, uh, has done a tremendous amount of good. And I think that um, too often that's overlooked. I mean, he has dragged the Democratic Party, I think, to be more in his own image. Um, uh, the discussions about health care, if you go back, went back, 15 years, uh, we weren't discussing health care as a right. Um, I think that's a major change. Um, and I think we should all be thankful for Senator Sanders and, and really talked about income inequality in a way um, that really needs to be discussed. I think it's the number one issue that, that was ignored by politicians for far too long. The fact that in, uh, you know, 30 years ago, the average CEO made 50 times what their employee makes, now they make 300 times. At some point, you know, um, wh where's it gone uh, too far? Um, and so uh, I have enormous amount of respect uh, for Senator Sanders, and I'm not gonna tell him he has to drop out of an election. Um, uh, you know, yes, I believe that Joe Biden will be the nominee, and yes, I support Joe Biden uh, against Donald Trump, of course. But I, I have no problem with Senator Sanders staying part of the conversation. I'm sure he wants to have his delegates at convention to influence the Rules Committee and the Platform Committee, and he has every right to do so. Um, I believe that at the end of the day, he'll wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly support uh, Joe Biden. Um, I believe he'll ask his supporters to do so. I know that there are a lot of hurt feelings from the primary. Um, and I, I don't really like the whole uh, blue no matter who kind of concept. Uh, I'm a Democrat, I'm gonna vote for a Democrat, that, that's who I am. But just telling somebody that doesn't convince them that it's true. I think we as Democrats have a responsibility to go out to all the Sanders supporters and talk to them about why we think it's important and what issues that we, sh uh, and what values we share uh, with them and, and convince them that uh, voting for Joe Biden's right. But the idea that we just uh, say it and assume it and can shame people into it, I think really is probably the wrong way to go about trying to convince somebody. It might make us feel better, but it's really doesn't help, help us. Um, and at the end of the day, that's what politics is about. It's actually trying to go get someone's vote.
Uh, so I think we should we should listen more too. I think that's the other thing that um, uh, I I think that the the party failed last election cycle in not listening to what the Sanders people were saying. Uh, and a lot of them felt disenfranchised and weren't involved in the Clinton campaign. Uh, I think listening is the most important tool that we have in politics, and we should be listening more uh, to those Sanders supporters, even if we disagree with them. And uh, we're obviously seeing uh, the uh, disparities in income play out in this crisis uh, with 80% uh, uh, of the cases in three counties uh, where uh, poverty is at the heart of those three counties. Absolutely. Uh, what changes, uh, what big changes do you think the state is going to have to make uh, once this is over uh, to protect those citizens in the future? Yeah, well, uh, you know, health disparities didn't start with COVID and they're not going to end there. Um, and, you know, certainly we've done a reasonably decent job of helping poor people get access to health care in Michigan. We've expanded uh, uh, Medicaid, we've done those things. But having a card and getting quality health care and having access to it when you need it is a completely different thing. Um, you know, if you live in a community that uh, is a food desert, it's hard to have healthy food uh, to actually be taken care of. Uh, if you can't afford uh, your co-payments, it doesn't matter that you have an insurance card. So I, I think that we need to look at all these issues as a holistic uh, approach uh, and actually invest in these communities where we have these health disparities. Um, and you have to start uh, from the ground up and not assume that just because you hand somebody an insurance card, they have access to health care, because those are two very, very different things. Uh, let's talk about uh, the other side of this uh, presidential contest. And uh, uh, we're seeing uh, the president have extraordinary access uh, to the media. Uh, even, <laughs> we, sure. We watch, uh, we watch him on television, uh, usually prefaced by somebody like Chuck Todd saying, we're going to cut away when we think he's not sticking to the truth. And yet he... We, they, that would be 30 they, seconds. They don't. They don't um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'll tell you this. Um, in times of crisis, every single president gets the benefit of the doubt. Right. I mean, you look at George Bush's polling numbers right after 9-11, uh, 60, 70 percent approval rate. Uh, I, we're not seeing that here. And in fact, his numbers are already starting to take a down. And it's because he has this, he's a, he has such a problem with the truth, one. But I think it's more than that is that he makes these things about him. You know, I mean, people are, are, are dying. People are working in hospitals without access to PPE. Uh, you know, and he's tweeting about his ratings as if that matters to anybody. I mean, it, it just, it baffles my mind that you would think that. Um, and so, uh, you know, I mean, I, the biggest mistake the media made in the last election cycle was assuming that he was a joke and therefore continuing to show up because it was entertaining. He's P.T. Barnum. Um, and uh, so far, the numbers don't seem to be showing that these are that these elongated briefings where he talks nonsense is really helping him. Uh, but uh, I do agree that they should cut away a little more um, and more focus on what Dr. Fauci is saying, because at the end of the day, that's who should be driving the policy here. These decisions have to be made by doctors and scientists. They cannot be made by politicians. Uh, we've seen uh, the, the Governor Whitmer get national attention, uh, first uh, because of uh, her uh, uh, well-regarded uh, response uh, to the president uh, at the State of the Union. And, uh, and now, uh, because the president uh, took her on, uh, yeah. and she gave it right back. 
Uh, as a result, uh, there's talk about her being uh, among the top tier candidates uh, to, to be the vice presidential selection. And I th what goes through my mind is, do we really, uh, do we in Michigan really want a change in governor? Do we want a governor who's going to be out campaigning uh, this fall? Uh, when the state obviously is going to have so many huge problems it still has to deal with. Yeah, I, I get that sentiment. That sentiment. Um, what I would say is that um, I can 100% understand why Joe Biden would want to pick Gretchen Whitmer. Um, she is uh, bright. She's quick on her feet. Um, uh, she's a fighter. Um, you know, somebody, you know, she's not going to back down from a punch. Um, uh, and uh, this crisis, I think having a strong governor as a, uh, on the ticket makes sense. Because in this crisis, really the governors have been the people that have stepped up, Republican and Democrat. Governors have stepped up around the country. There's still nine, I think, that haven't done actually the, the, the right thing and shut down their states. but. Um, but most, for the most part, they have. And I think that's a good, um, you know, a president who cares about himself and a governor that's cared about people, I think, is a, is a, is a good juxtaposition. But I get your sentiment. Um, uh, and Garland Gilchrist is, is a very smart person. I mean, I don't think um, there would be any problem with him being governor. But I, I can understand why you wouldn't want to lose Gretchen Warmer. I get that. Uh, what do you think the odds are that she will be on the ticket? Oh, you're asking me to like bet, <laughs> like guess. Um, 20%. Hmm. Why do you think uh, 20%? Well, I mean, I think it's hard to guess, right? I mean, like nobody would have guessed most of the people that people picked. So it's in general, I, don't, I, I think if you give anybody more than 20%, you're kind of fooling yourself. So I would put her in the same category as Kathleen uh, 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 Harris, I'd put her in the same category. As uh, Amy Klobuchar, or, or you know, I mean, I think that would. Yeah, obviously, uh, there's a lot of sentiment uh, that favors a woman on the ticket. Uh, how does Michigan uh, help Biden? Oh, uh, uh, you know, I'm. Uh, I think Michigan helps Biden uh, in a number of ways. I mean, I think that. Um, we have experienced what um, a uh, colossal, uh, I'm trying to think of the word not, not to use, uh, a colossal mess up on the federal level um, really, uh, you know, can, can do to a state. Um, so I think that's a big thing. And I mean, a lot of broken promises, you know, I mean, uh, we were promised that, that manufacturing would be back it's, you know, manufacturing is doing okay in Michigan, but not anything that was near what was promised for uh, people here. Um, so uh, I think, I think you, if you look at uh, the last election cycle in 2014, um, the, the, I'm sorry, in 2018 and the turnout and everything else, and uh, you look at that and how people voted, I think that that shows that um, this election cycle, people want something different. They, they, they don't want Donald Trump. I also think the Michigan people are nicer. You, know, the people <laughs> in the West, you know, I mean, the people on the west side of the state, you know, Kent County, never voted uh, Democratic. I and mean, we have a Democratic state senator from Kent County now. And I think it's, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a meanness and a coarseness to him that, that um, uh, those people just don't appreciate. I see. Well, uh, before I let you go, it's very important to ask you what toppings you're going to put on that pizza tonight. <laughs> I don't know. How do you figure that <laughs> out? The pepperoni. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm, uh, I don't, I, I don't know, man. I'm, <laughs> I think somebody else will make a decision in the house. I, I cook every night. I don't want, I don't, I don't want to be part of the ordering pizza process. No mushrooms. <laughs> I can tell you that. Very good. Well, Senator Hertel, thank you very much for your time. Stay well. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Take care.